Good Wednesday evening. Thank you so much for viewing, being with us today. We hope and pray that this service will be a blessing to you. We want to welcome you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, we want to invite you to come be with us in any or all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11, Sunday nights at 6 p.m., Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., we're located at 1233 College Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. We also have an FM transmitter for those that are too sick to come inside or disabled to where they can't come inside. They can still come to the church parking lot during service times, tune their radio to 92.9 FM, and be able to hear what's going on inside. If you'd ever like to correspond with us by mail, you could send that to 275 Toast Road, Mount Airy, North Carolina, 27030. It sure is good to be with you, and we hope and pray, like I said before, that this service will be a blessing to you that are shut in, that are not able to get out of your house or go to church like you once used to love to go. And then many of you view that do go to church, and we don't want to knock you out of going to church, but many of you view other days of the week and different times of the day. <clears throat> and thank you so much for viewing. We hope it'll always be a blessing to your heart. We want to go to the Lord in a word of prayer this evening, and then we're going to sing a song that maybe all of you will be able to sing along with a song. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And please pray for us as well. Father, thank you today for the privilege to pray. Thank you for your many blessings. And Lord, I need your help as I always do. I need your guidance, your direction. I pray that your will might be done, Lord. I pray for the lost that they'll get saved and those that's back so they'll get right. Help us all to draw closer to you. We pray for each one that views, God, that you meet the need in their heart, their life. Most of all, if they're lost, that's the greatest need is, is for salvation. And Lord, deal with their heart. I pray for the many that are sick, Lord, in body, that you'd raise them up physically. These on our prayer list to your church. God, that you'd bless them as well. And all of our missionaries, Lord, we pray for each one of our missionaries. God, that you'd bless them in a great way, especially for the Brent Rochester and his family. And we continue to pray for little Chloe, God, that you'd bless her in a great way as well. Thank you for this family. Pray you continue to use them for your glory and your honor. Help us all to be used by you. We know that we must have your help. Thank you for the sweet spirit of God that lives within every one of us that are saved. We'll praise you for all that you do for us. In Christ's name we pray. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to try a hymn here out of the hymn book, <laughs> the old church hymnal. And we're going to try page 312 today. 312. You'll be familiar with it if you don't have a church hymnal. You can still sing along. <clears throat> We'd love for you to do that. This one's called, I'll Meet You in the Morning. Actually, it's called The Eastern Gate. That's what it's called. I'm looking right at it. It's called The Eastern Gate. This song was copywritten in 1905. Think about that right there just a minute. 1905, this song was copywritten. So that means it was probably written earlier than that. And, uh, but let's sing this old song right here, The Eastern Gate. Hope it'll be a blessing to you today. I will meet you in the morning just inside the Eastern Gate. And be ready, faithful pilgrim, best with you it be today. Lamps all trimmed and burning 
I will meet you. I will meet you in the morning over there. Oh, the joy of that glad meeting with the saints who for us wait. What a blessed, happy meeting just inside the eastern gate. Inside the eastern gate over there, I will meet you, I will meet you, I will meet you in the morning over there. Amen. Well, that's a good old hymn right there, the eastern gate. Thank God for it. I hope that was a blessing to you today, and we'll do another song here in just a little bit. Uh, be much in prayer for our service this evening at church at 7 p.m. <clears throat> Lord willing that God would bless that in a great way. We always need the Lord's help. I know that I do, and I really know that you do. Whether you realize that or not, we all, we all need the Lord's help. Be taking that good old authorized King James Bible and be turning with us this evening to the book of Luke, excuse me, the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter number seven. Acts chapter number seven, somewhere around verse number one. And be turning if you can, if you are to where you can, we'd love for you to do that. If not, we'll read to you right out of this good old authorized King James Bible, the Word of God. And boy, I'm glad that I know I have the Word of God. I'm glad of that. And uh, I appreciate the Lord as many, many blessings. I don't think there's any announcements that I need to make right now, as far as I know anyway. But uh, we're going to go ahead and do another song. I don't think I've done this song on these videos at all, these Wednesday evening videos. This is one I just recently learned. It's not a new song. It's an old song. But a lady in a nursing facility asked me to learn this song. And uh, <clears throat> I think I've got it memorized. We'll find out here in just a minute. But uh, it's been a blessing to my heart. And it's called, I Can Go to Them. Talks about our loved ones that have gone on before us that were saved by God's grace. Uh, I love the message in this song. And uh, boy, I tell you, if we know what the Word of God says about these things and believe what the Word of God says, we can have the attitude that the songwriter has as we listen to the message in this song. So I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Then we'll be in, we'll have prayer, and then we'll be in the book of Acts, chapter number seven. I can go to Him. Listen closely to the message in this song. Oh, tears off in my eyes, I'm happy in my soul. Well, if I can remember the word, let's try that one more time, see if I can get it. Oh, tears off in my eyes, I'm happy in my soul. I'm thinking of my friends who walk the street of gold. Resting now in peace. 
to you. We'll work on that. We'll keep working on that, trying to get it memorized a little better. But I still hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, thank God I can't, I can't bring them back, but I can go to them. Those that's already gone on to be with the Lord. Praise God for that. And I hope you found your place in the book of Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter number 7. Acts chapter number 7. I like that one verse says I cannot bring, bring them back. I would not if I could. Amen. They're so much better off than you and I are here. We look forward to heaven one day, seeing our Savior, falling at his feet and worshiping him. But also we do look forward as well, our seeing our loved ones again, being with them again. What a blessing that's going to be. The book of Acts, chapter number seven. What's going on here is Stephen has just been arrested, you might say. And uh, he's full of the, Holy Ghost and wisdom and they told some lies on him and said some things about him and the Bible says in verse 15 of chapter number 6 and all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Stephen was a great man of God. Great man of God. Then said the high priest asked Stephen a question. Are these things so? Are these things so? What they said about you, uh, they, they lied and said that Stephen said uh, blasphemous words against Moses and against God. That was not true, but yet Stephen is before the council, the Bible says. And the high priest said, are these things so? And, and Stephen preaches a message. I keep on saying Peter, but Stephen preaches them a message. Oh my goodness. What a blessing. They hear the word of God. They lie on him, but yet he loves them enough to give them the word of God. Listen to what he says. They looked at his face, verse 15, chapter 6. The Bible says, saw his face as it had been the face of the angel. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, Stephen begins his message to the council. He said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, hearken. Listen, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. It's his time to speak. And he speaks to the men, the brethren, and the fathers in the council. And he says, hearken. He says, I want you to listen to what I've got to say. The God of glory appeared unto our father, Abram. What he's given them is a history lesson. The God of glory appeared unto our father, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran. And God said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land. Abraham was obedient. Verse 4, Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Iran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land, this land, wherein ye now dwell. Think about that. And he gave him none inheritance in it, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession. God promised that he would give it to Abraham for a possession and to his seed, his offspring after him, when as yet he had no child. God promised him that and he hadn't even got a child yet. And God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage. He's speaking of when they went down into Egypt, Joseph helped them to continue living God worked all that out, amen. And the Bible says that they should bring into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God, and we know from history and the word of God that he did. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. He's, boy, he's giving them a good history lesson. 
He gave him the covenant of circumcision, verse 8. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs, in other words, our ancestors. And the patriarchs, moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. Notice that. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth or drought, you might say, or a famine. There came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren. And Joseph's kindred was made known to Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died. He and our fathers and Joseph took care of them there. And were carried over into Sechem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. We, we're familiar with this story. You are too. And the Bible says, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly, craftily, wildly, you might say. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil and treated our fathers. Keep in mind, Stephen is preaching this to the, to the men, the brethren, the fathers. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil and treated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. When he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up, speaking of Moses, and nourished him for her own son. What a wonderful story that is. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up, verse 21, and nursed him for her own son. And Moses was learned, notice, in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. When he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. He took up for his people, for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, you are brethren. Why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill us as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at the saying and was a stranger in the land of Midian where he begat two sons. And when 40 years were expired, he's now 80, there appeared unto him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near, behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not. Behold, then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. He sends Moses back to Egypt. Notice this Moses, whom they refused earlier, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. God used him. He brought them out. And after that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Verse 37, Stephen is still preaching. He's saying to those people, This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, same Moses said this, a prophet, shall, your, shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, him shall ye hear. And then he says, this is he. He's going to preach to them about Jesus. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai with our fathers who received the lively oracles given to, given to us to give unto us to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them and their hearts turned back again into Egypt saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. God used Moses to bring them out and they already want to go back to Egypt. They made a calf in those days, verse 41, and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, ye have offered, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices for the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Molech, a false god, and the star of your false god, Rephim, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, he says, 
as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus under the possession of the Gentiles, Joshua, Jesus, same word, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers in the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. He's continuing the history lesson. But Solomon built him a house. How be the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is mine, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? And then Stephen says to this crowd, the men, the brethren, the fathers, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. What a slap in their face, but how true he spoke. They were stiff-necked. They were uncircumcised in their heart and in their ears. Here's what he said. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Stephen said. And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, speaking of Jesus Christ, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, you betrayed him, you murdered him. That's what he said. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. You've been hearers but not doers. You persecuted the ones God has sent to try to help you. And they're persecuting Stephen at the same time. And when Stephen finished his message, the Bible says when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. I'm going to stop there. They gnashed on him with their teeth. Just like their fathers, when the men of God, the prophets of God would give them the truth, they would persecute them. Some they would put to death. They rejected what Jesus said. They, they, I know he came to die. We know that. But they had him crucified. I know it was God's will. But they put him to death. He was willing, thank God, because of you and me. And now... They won't listen to what Stephen says either. They're just like their fathers. Notice when they heard these things, verse 54, chapter number seven, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Literally began to bite him. They gnashed on him with their teeth. They were rejecting what God was trying to do for them and how God was trying to help them. They were rejecting God's love, God's mercy, God's message from God's man. And we'll see, Lord willing, next Wednesday night what they did to him, what they did to him. We've already read when they heard these things that were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Let me just say this. What they should have done was get right with God, not get mad at the messenger, but listen to the message and get right with God. That's what they should have done. Boy, what a message Stephen preached. What a history lesson Stephen gave them. What a blessing Stephen was to these people and they did not even realize it. What a blessing Stephen was to the early church. Man, what a what a what a preaching, what a preaching deacon. Amen. Hope this has been a help to you. Lord willing, we'll pick up and see what they did to Stephen, Lord willing, next Wednesday night. Thank you for viewing. I hope it's been a blessing to you. If it has on our YouTube video, and that's probably where you're seeing this, if it's been a blessing to you, hit the like button. The more people that do that will help us get this message out. Facebook will see that or YouTube will see that rather and they'll get it in front of more people. Be more opportunity for people to hear the, the word of God. That's what it's about anyway. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time we upload a video to YouTube and help us share it if you would. Help us get the word of God out because that's what it's all about anyway, getting the word of God out. Thank you for viewing. Until next Wednesday night, God bless you is my prayer.